Anyone who trains with a power meter knows what FTP is, and they know how difficult those FTP tests can be. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, go ahead and smash that like button. But let's go ahead and talk about how we can improve our FTP over time. And specifically, if you're watching this video, you want to do it quickly. Now, we'll talk through some of the workouts and some of the specific plans that can help you to improve your FTP over the next couple of weeks. But more important than that is how you can improve your fitness, your aerobic capacity, and your cycling over the next few years. So stick with it, and we'll go through some of those specifics. Now, if you're anything like me, as soon as you were able to tie your fitness to a specific number, and in this case, it's FTP, it instantly becomes competitive. I know that's exactly how it works for me. As soon as I knew what my FTP was, my only goal for the next few weeks was increasing that number as fast as I could. Now, before we get into this video, and I, the video's about FTP, I know that, we'll get into it. Before we get too deep, I wanna say FTP is not the only measure of your cycling fitness. Make sure, please make sure that you're not completely gauging all of your cycling fitness based off your FTP. One person can have a significantly higher FTP but consistently be losing races to someone with a lower FTP but more of a complete understanding of what makes cycling fitness. So with that caveat, we'll get started with a couple of myths that I commonly hear and I've seen online in multiple forums people discussing about what FTP is and how best to train it. Now the first myth, as I just mentioned, is that FTP is everything. It isn't, as I explained, it's not the only measure of your cycling fitness. It's not what's going to win races. It's a measure of your threshold power. Now it's important to know what that is. You need to know what your threshold power is so you can hit those limits and continue to exceed your capacity to push harder gears at a higher power rating. But that's not what's gonna win a race for you. You need to make sure that as your gaining fitness on the bike as you're spending more time cycling you're realizing to improve your climbing your descending your bike handling skills your aerobic capacity is a huge one your endurance over long periods of time so four and five hour rides are just as important to your overall cycling as an ftp test of 20 minutes or some of the intervals i'm going to mention later in this video so just keep that in mind, that's myth number one. Myth number two is that high intensity workouts are the only way to increase your FTP. Now again, this is wrong. While these high intensity workouts are super helpful for increasing your FTP over short periods of time, and I'm going to talk about some high intensity and interval workouts later in the video, it's not the only way to improve it. And studies have shown that if you only work in high intensity zones and don't give yourself some more consistent aerobic and endurance miles, you will see limits in what you can do. It shows both high intensity short duration training and low intensity high volume training are important components of training programs for athletes who compete successfully in intense exercise events. So realize that not just the high intensity, not just the push as hard as you can, mash those gears, go up all the hills that you can find in your area, that's not the only thing that's going to get you to a higher FTP. And especially as you do that, realize that if you try to push yourself too hard, your FTP can eventually plateau. And that's obviously something that you don't want to see. Now there's another study that says, when training does not have an appropriate blend of both high intensity training and high volume training inserted into the program, performance ability can stagnate. Now, as I mentioned before, we do not want to hit that plateau. We don't want to stagnate our growth. It's cool and fun and exciting to see your FTP increase by 20, 30, 40 after a really high intensity month. But if you're not including and blending, as the scholarly articles say, some of that lower intensity, longer duration rides, you're not going to see those consistent gains over time and you will see that your, your benefits are gonna plateau at a certain point. So keep that in mind, that's myth number two. Now myth number three I've seen in multiple locations, both online and in other discussions about FTP is that the 20 minute test, the classic, the gold standard is just flat out wrong, that it's not a good estimate of your FTP. So yes, I know no test is gonna be perfectly accurate and it's an estimation. You, know, you take a 20 minute test as hard as you can, 95% of that is generally accepted to be your FTP. So another article and another study has shown that FTP relies on aerobic metabolism and both prediction models, so the, the models that they used in this test were the CPET, which is a cardiopulmonary exercise test, and a typical Windsor 30 second intensity actual workout test, 
So both of those prediction models are sensitive enough to detect meaningful exercise induced changes in FTP and VO2 max. So let me show this quick graph and you can see that the difference between the estimated and the actuals or the estimated versus CPET against the actual exercise test, there's slight differences. But the important thing in this study to note is that over time and over exercise and increased capacity and work, you can see significant exercise benefits and these tests are accurate measures of those benefits. So even though again, no test is perfect, this myth is just flat out wrong because over time you will see the exercise benefits, you'll see the numbers improve and it's a significant way to measure that improvement in your FTP. So let's move on. The last myth I wanna talk about, myth number four, is that you can only see FTP gains from time in the saddle. Now this is kind of an interesting one. Obviously we wanna spend more time on our bikes and riding hard, going through those intervals and even doing longer endurance rides, but it's important to vary your training not only on a bike. Now remember that you can go to the gym and increase your power, which is going to improve your FTP over time. If you can push higher gears, if you can push harder for longer, improving yourself and improving your cycling, the muscles that are involved in cycling is going to help you to improve your skills. And it has been tested and shown that lower body heavy strength training performed in addition to endurance cycling training can improve both short and long-term endurance performance. I know you're looking for short-term FTP gains here, but remember a well-rounded cyclist is a better cyclist overall. Now, unless your specific gift is a prologue time trial in the Tour de France and that's you were built, put on this earth for that, maybe you have a slightly different training plan and you're probably looking at more significant coaching than YouTube. But remember that well-rounded athletes are in general better athletes and that's the kind of cyclist that I strive to be. So if you're like me, then that's something you want to set as your goal as well. Okay, so you made it this far into the video. First of all, thank you. If you liked it so far, don't forget to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support. So let's talk about some workouts that you can do to increase your FTP over the next couple of weeks that you can put into your schedule consistently. Now, as I say these, remember that every one of these workouts is going to need an effective warm up and an effective cool down. Now this is even more important if you're a little bit older. The younger people tend to not have, be so affected by overtraining as those of a more advanced age. So keep that in mind if that applies to you. I'm realizing that more and more each year as I get a little bit older that the warm up and cool down significantly affect the work that I can do during the interval as well as how I feel after and the next day. So keep that in mind. The first workout that I want to talk about is a classic FTP workout two by 20 minute intervals, usually at 95 to 100% of your FTP. Now, these are hard and difficult. Remember that your FTP test is testing your hardest work over 20 minutes. This is an interval to almost mimic that, two of them. You're doing this, obviously that's 40 minutes of hard interval work. Make sure you're giving yourself enough warm up and enough cool down to get this done. But this is gonna be your main chunk of FTP work, really trying to push yourself harder and keep in mind, this is gonna teach you what that test looks like. You're gonna know what 20 minutes feels like. You're gonna be able to push through it and push maybe even harder when you go into your test. The second type of workout we're talking about is even shorter intervals than that. So we were talking three by 10 minute intervals at 100 to 105 of your FTP. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to space these with about three minutes of rest. So some easy spinning in between, usually around 70% of your FTP. Just keep that, keep the gears going. Don't lose some of that uh, intensity you've already built up. But three by 10 minutes is gonna be super helpful to you. It's half of the time you're gonna be in an FTP test. So you'll be able to push a little bit harder, but try and make sure that over the three intervals, you're keeping your intensity strong from the first one to the last one. Now, very similarly to that, you can pepper in some four by eight minutes, which is gonna do almost the same thing, but for longer. Now it's eight minutes and only two minutes shorter than the three by 10, but a four by eight is gonna give you the opportunity to space it out a little bit more and go a little bit harder. You can go 100 to 120% of your FTP during these four by eight intervals. Another great workout for your FTP is called the over under. So you're gonna build up to a really hard over for one minute 
and then go under your FTP for two minutes. And go one minute over, two minutes under, one minute over, two minutes under. Usually you'll do this about five times and give yourself plenty of time to do this for a warm up and plenty of time to cool down because this is definitely a difficult one. So you're going at 80%, which is your under, and 125%, which is your over. So if my FTP is 200, my over is 250. That's, that gets pretty intense pretty fast. So remember that it's, it's hard for one minute, really hard, and you're going under at 80%. So again, 200 v 160, nice easy spin. And you're doing this one after the other, over, under, over, under. You won't have rest during this interval. So keep that in mind. But this is really good for being able to ramp up the power quickly, going over small hills during a race, and learning how to quickly ratchet up your power numbers. So doing this workout, the over-unders, which is personally one of my favorites, is super useful to improving your FTP. Studies show that training a few beats below and a few beats above lactate threshold or FTP is a powerfully effective intensity for improving threshold and endurance. So keep that in mind as you're planning your weeks. Now another thing I should say when I'm talking about all of these intervals, most of them are interval workouts and these are high intensity and very difficult. I mentioned at the beginning you shouldn't just be doing high intensity work. Make sure to do high intensity segments of your training and low intensity segments. Variance is going to be important for your overall cycling skill. As you're increasing your FTP, make sure you're also focusing on other areas of cycling. But including these high intensity and threshold workouts in your week during that high intensity segment of training is so useful and you will see your FTP numbers start to improve as you do this. Now make sure you're only doing two or three of these workouts a week. I know you'd love to do this on every single workout during the week, but keep in mind that realistically, your body can only handle so much of the intensity training. So make sure you're doing longer and more endurance rides during the week, even during a high intensity segment of training so that you can keep things varied while you're training and while you're on your bike. It also keeps it exciting. You can go out for a long ride, go around a more significant loop than you'd be doing for your intervals, maybe trying to find hills and such. So keep that in mind. And the last workout that I want to talk about is the sweet spot. You're not doing as much intensity work, but this is definitely going to help you remember to stay at that threshold for a more consistent period of time. So the sweet spot for your FTP is generally accepted to be 88 to 94% of your functional threshold power. So keep in mind, if you're at 200 FTP, you're going to want to stay somewhere between 176 and 188. So it's a pretty small window there, but remember that you're just below your FTP. You wanna make sure that you're somewhere where you can consistently keep that power for a long period of time. Now you're doing this on your longer endurance rides. After a warm up, you hit that pace and you just keep it going for as long as you can. And keep in mind that you're learning how to stay consistent over a longer period. And as your FTP increases, as your training goes on and as you do all these high intensity workouts to improve that number, this steady state and this sweet spot is going to get higher and higher. So making sure to do these workouts will keep your body used to holding that sweet spot between endurance and intensity for longer periods of time. Okay, so you're watching this video to know how to improve your FTP and do it quickly. So let's finish up with the five key points to how you can improve your FTP. Number one, be consistent. Now, one of the major things that you see within in amateur athletes is that they'll work really, really hard when they have that goal in mind. It's like the January effect with your yearly goals. Work really, really hard and then slack off and then come back to it, work really, really hard. This type of training is not effective for improving your FTP. Make sure you're consistent. When you plan a week, schedule the time you're gonna work out. Don't just say, oh, I'll work out sometime on Wednesday because very easily your work on Wednesday pushes that to Thursday and that messes up the rest of your week. Plan how you're going to exercise in your own schedule. If you're having trouble scheduling everything with such a tight work demand or you don't have as much time, make sure you're looking at the Time Crunched Cyclist. I'll link to it on Amazon, put that in the description below. But if you're running short on time, I recommend reading that book. It's a great resource for those who only have six to 10 hours a week. Now keep in mind consistency, consistency, consistency. That's actually a really hard word to say over and over again, but that's what you want to remember and you want to make sure you're training often and doing so without missing workouts as much as possible. The second key point that I want to make sure to mention is variance. Variance is hugely important. So I mentioned all the workouts that I recommend for improving your FTP. Most of them are intensity, 
high intensity intervals, that's how you increase your FTP. That's the easiest way to boost the number, but variance is what's going to keep those gains across your career. You wanna keep that FTP high for a long period of time. The way to do that is keeping consistent and varying your training. So do 10 weeks of high intensity training and 10 weeks of consistent longer endurance, longer rides, and keep those gains strong while also making sure your body is taken care of. You don't wanna be doing intensity workouts every day throughout the week either. Something I talked about during the workout section of this video was making sure that you're only doing two or three high intensity workouts per week. That should be your maximum. Shoot for two and if it's a really good week and you really wanna boost it, you can go up to three, but make sure that that is your limit. You vary that in with endurance and longer rides and that will help you immensely. The third key point that I wanted to talk about is testing. Now, FTP testing is really the only way that we're gonna know how we're improving over time with our FTP, so test often. You can test as much as once a week if you'd like to, but I've seen that that kind of gets in the way with your training, so I usually shoot for every other week during the more high intensity sections of training and once a month when doing some of the more endurance and longer rides. And as I mentioned consistency earlier, Make sure you're testing consistently as well so that you know with key points along the way every two weeks or every week or every month how you're improving instead of once then the next week and then the next month and then three months from now it'll be much harder to track your progress and then say okay these workouts are working for me they're improving my ftp i'm getting stronger and faster so keeping that consistency in your testing as well as your training is going to help with your motivation as you can see your ftp continue to rise Okay, the fourth thing that I will say for increasing your FTP and improving your cycling in general, and probably, I don't know, one of the most important things that you can do, so listen carefully, is like this video. Come on, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it, I appreciate the support, so it takes one second. You could probably have already done it by now. The fifth thing to say, and just to wrap up this video, when you're working out, when you're writing your training plans, make sure to push yourself. Push yourself to the next level. If you're increasing your FTP, Yes, it's going to hurt, it's going to be difficult. It's not easy, it's not comfortable, it's not supposed to be comfortable. Increasing your fitness is something that you're working hard at, you're pushing yourself to a new level, and make sure you're giving your effort when you're in these workouts. Realize that it also isn't just while you're in the saddle. When you're planning your week and saying, oh, you know, maybe I'm just too busy this week, that's the time to push yourself just as much as when you hit an interval or hit a hill and a high intensity workout. So remember to push yourself, and you'll get to that next level. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's super important and you'll see all the future videos that I come out with. I definitely focus on technology and fitness and sports. If that's something you're into, let's go on this journey together. If you have any additional questions about FTP, improving your FTP or cycling technology in general, please leave those in the comments section below. Happy to get to them. I read all the comments and we'll make sure that we consistently upload things that you are looking for. So. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.